and welcome to the DSR Daily. I'm David Rothkopf. I'm joined by Riley Fessler. How are you doing, Riley? Pretty good. And by Minna Stein. How are you, Minna? Fantastic. What are you kicking us off with today, Riley? Eric Trump news. Oh, <laughs> Your favorite. Yeah. Your favorite of the Trump brood. The, smart, the smartest. <clears throat> yes, right. Eric Trump. Eric Trump is set to headline a cryptocurrency conference in Abu Dhabi, signaling the Trump organization's readiness to expand its global business during Donald Trump's anticipated or er, during Donald Trump's second presidency. The Trump family business is pursuing de- foreign deals, including real estate projects in the Middle East and Asia, and a new cryptocurrency platform, World Liberty Financial, which recently secured a significant investment. Unlike Trump's First term, the organization will not adhere to a blanket ban on foreign deals. Critics warn that the company's ventures, intertwined with politically sensitive regions and industries, risk blurring the lines between public service and private profit. Wait, what? There's something wrong with it? What are you? You know, like, you're so hypercritical. I mean, yeah, the Constitution actually says the president can't make money through any other means, foreign or domestic, emoluments clause, both emoluments clauses. Uh, and sure, you know, it, it looks bad that if he's getting a lot of money from different foreign governments that he depends on or that his kids want, and uh, that might give them you a sense that they have some leverage over him. But I'm sure they won't do that. I'm sure they will do everything completely on the up and up and in the interests of the people of the United States of America. My country, tis of thee, sweet land. Why aren't you guys singing along? Why aren't you guys patriotic? We just we don't feel the same patriotism in our hearts that you do, I guess, David. <laughs> We're yeah. not on your level. Uh, yeah, no, you should feel very patriotic about our, about our country and the fact that a, a young man like Eric Trump, with no discernible talent or intelligence, could have a good life. And, you know, his wife may end up being the next senator from Florida. Minna. Oof. Very probable. <laughs> you know, so that's that's another. But these guys are doing great by doing well for all of us. Uh, by the way, Bitcoin passed 100,000 yesterday for Bitcoin. I'm sure that means a lot to both of you. I'm a person, per, you know, I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm, I'm like a boomer skeptic that thinks that, you know, um, uh, you know, all of these kind of fake currencies are a scam that are going to ultimately collapse on everyone. Um, but, uh, you know, now that the president's behind it, it's good as gold. Yeah. Hey, go, go out. Buy if like, you can buy Trump watches with it, then it must be a real currency. It must be. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I know. I know your Trump tourbillon is in the mail, David. When oh are you, yeah. When no, are you going to well, unbox that live for us? Uh, yeah, it's, well, it has to first of all be made by the Chinese. And <laughs> <laughs> Mine um, is also in the mail. Yeah, but as soon as it gets here, I will be wearing that every day because, as I heard on an ad the other day on MSNBC, this is owning a piece of history. Because the president, there was an ad, wait, there was an ad for the Trump watches on on MSNBC two days ago. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. And, and and the president, and it's got Trump like doing the voiceover, like you know, own a piece of history. And I'm like, the president elect, the president elect <laughs> is selling merch. Oh, and there's and, there's new watches <laughs> now. He added more to the collection. <laughs> Is selling merch? Oh my god! Well, that's worth. Oh my god! There's an even better one out. now. Is there a better one? Yeah. So before there was just the fighter and the tourbillon. Now there's the Trump victory watch, the chronograph, the warrior, and the crypto president, which is as tacky as it sounds. <sighs> Uh, uh. The crypto president? Yeah. For, it says 45, 47 at the top, and then below that, crypto president, and then it has Donald Trump's signature below that. Well, I, I just, kind of want it. <laughs> well, it can be it can, it can be yours for uh see this one's a bargain it's only twelve hundred dollars twelve hundred what a steal what a what a steal and boy that watch i bet it's a super high quality watch oh, it, also, it, also <laughs> has, it has also has the bitcoin logo on the back and it says to the moon 
huh, huh. You know, I wonder if there's a Bitcoin scam going on. Here. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. Why it's would you just, think that? I don't, I don't know. It's just like maybe, first of all, they use some of this Bitcoin to raise money for Trump from a variety of foreign sources that are untraceable. And now they're going to pump it up because who owns a lot of Bitcoin? You know who really loves Bitcoin? Elon. Elon loves Bitcoin uh, or whatever his favorite cyber currency is um and uh gee i wonder I, we, we should probably watch that story we should probably watch that story um and when minna gets her watch we'll we'll show it to all of you on I've, there i've decided i don't want the bitcoin one as cool as it is and i want the trump victory one that has his face like etched in it i don't know if you see that one riley but it's oh, pretty, yeah, I, I, pretty extravagant <laughs> Well, he's, he's got a good face for a watch because his head is kind of pumpkin shaped anyway. And so it sort of works with the watch. Uh, maybe maybe there's another story, Minna, that can distract our attention from that. I don't know. <laughs> the fall of the French government, <laughs> or, um, you know, the collapse of the, the presidency mm. in South Korea. What do, mm-hmm. what do you have? Well, it's definitely not also about Trump. Okay. President Joe Biden, senior aides are debating whether to issue preemptive pardons to current and former public officials who could face legal retaliation under a potential under a second Trump administration. The discussion comes after Trump appointed Cash Patel to lead the FBI, a move that has raised concerns among Democrats and possible inquiries or indictments targeting those who opposed Trump, such as members of the January 6th committee. Dr. Fauci and others. Some Democratic lawmakers advocate for pardons to protect these individuals, citing the need to prevent Trump's potential revenge tour, while others oppose the idea, fearing it could appear defensive or unnecessary. Oh, for Christ's sakes. (laughs) The White House. Pay attention. Read the room, for God's sakes. (laughs) Um, Adam Schiff was one of those people who Who, deemed it unnecessary. Unnecessary, yeah. (laughs) Okay, well, fine. Senator Schiff, Senator elect Schiff, um, can, you know, pass on this kind of thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe they should have thought of this before they did the Hunter thing. And maybe they should have pardoned a whole bunch of people, um, it, you know, as a preparation, to, you know, for the arrival of Trump and his retribution oriented mob. Um, as opposed, you know, and but instead, we're now thinking, well, maybe we should do this or maybe we shouldn't, even though it was done for Hunter. Now, I, I, I'm not one of the people who has a big objection to them part, him pardoning Hunter. I just think it should have been done in a different context, uh, like, you know, something more thought out and fulsome. Uh, by the way, you said he appointed Cash Patel to be FBI director. He nominated Cash Patel to be the FBI director. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, he still has to be confirmed. And that's not a sure thing. Uh, so um, uh, we can we can hope Senate Republicans will nip that bad idea in the bud. Um, although Cash Patel could then end up being like deputy FBI director or something like that, which does not require Senate confirmation. Riley? Well, following up on yesterday's story, French Prime Minister Michel Barnier has resigned just three months into his term following a no-confidence vote, marking the first such defeat of a French government since 1962. The motion, supported by lawmakers from both the left and the far right, toppled Barnier after his controversial use of a constitutional mechanism to pass a budget that included unpopular tax hikes and spending cuts. This political turmoil reflects... This political turmoil reflects deep fractures in France's parliament, where President Emmanuel Macron's centrist bloc holds no majority. The crisis underscores the instability brought on by Macron's earlier decision to call snap elections, which fragmented the legislature and intensified political polarization. You said it, Riley, that, you know, this all traces back to that election. And when the election happened, um, this is what people predicted might happen. Um, Barnier was trying to do something sensible, <laughs> you know, that we don't see, for example, in our country, like cutting expenses and uh, raising taxes uh, in order to get a budget uh, closer to being balanced. And uh, 
you know, extremes in both ends of the parliament were against it. And, uh, uh, you know, we may see something similar here with, you know, if the far right and the far left, uh, you know, getting getting together behind uh, certain uh, initiatives. Um, for example, both of them are kind of strongly anti-China. We should we will see where that that leads us. Uh, Minna. The House Freedom Caucus opposed a proposed $100 billion disaster aid bill on Wednesday, criticizing it as unpaid and accusing Democrats of using the funding to push unrelated priorities. The caucus called for disaster relief to be paid for by cutting wasteful government spending and emphasized the need to wait for President Trump to manage future relief efforts. The statement follows discussions with Speaker Mike Johnson, who has been urged to include offsets for disaster funding. While bipartisan talks are ongoing to address hurricane-related disaster aid, some Republicans support a robust response, and the final agreement may be tied to a stopgap funding measure to prevent a government shutdown before Christmas. This is worrisome. I just underscore that right now, there are 220 Republicans in the House and 215 Democrats, but three of the Republicans are joining the Trump administration, which means that there will be 217 Republicans versus 215 Democrats for several months. And during that period, that means that if one Republican crosses over uh, or opposes something that's a Johnson initiative, it loses. Uh, and so the Freedom Caucus and groups like that realize they have a huge amount of leverage uh, and they can, you know, put forward um, uh, things like this that actually ultimately hurt the American people. You know, this is disaster relief. Um, it's not, you know, boondoggle. And uh, the, 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 the consequences of not providing it is, are, are, are suffering of, of millions of people. And, uh, uh, you know, it's not responsible. Uh, and the kind of programs they will want to cut with this um, are other programs that benefit people. Uh, they would certainly never want to, you know, offset it by raising taxes, say, on the very rich, which would also do it, of course. Um, and that's a problem. And that's going to be a theme that we're going to see for the next uh, year, next four years. Um, this tension between, you know, an alleged desire to cut uh, and, uh, you know, arithmetic. Riley? Romanian authorities have unveiled evidence of a coordinated attempt to interfere in the country's presidential election, allegedly involving a state-sponsored campaign on TikTok and a series of cyber attacks. Far-right candidate and Kaylin Far-right candidate Kalin Georgescu, a NATO skeptic with ties to pro-Russian rhetoric, saw an unexpected surge in popularity after a highly organized campaign used influencers and unmarked paid content to promote him, violating election laws. Intelligence reports link the effort to external actors using advanced cyber techniques with thousands of hacks targeting electoral systems and sensitive data leaked online from Russian platforms. Georgescu denies involvement, accusing the state of trying to block his candidacy as Prime Minister Marcel Ciolacu backs reformist candidate Elena Lasconi ahead of Sunday's runoff. <laughs> you keep, in your summary, you refer to external actors and then buried in there, it says it comes from Russian sources. It's not external actors. It's Russia trying to meddle in this election like it tries to meddle in lots of elections across Europe and in the United States. Um, and they've been pretty successful in case you haven't been paying attention. Uh, and, you know, in the United States, they've managed to get it to the point that the person nominated to head the U.S. intelligence community directly, you know, gets, according to a story this morning, gets her information from RT, the Russian television station, and is just mouthing um, uh, Russian propaganda in a way that has some people uh, on the Hill and in the intelligence community, believing that she has been compromised, that she is part of this Russian campaign. Uh, we'll see how that plays out in the weeks ahead. Uh, clearly, we've got the Pete Hegseth drama ahead of that in line. Uh, and I'm not sure whether the Cash Patel drama will precede her drama or follow it. 
Um, but I do think there's a, a, a kind of strange possibility here where, you know, uh, the uh, with, when Pete Hegseth drops out, that'll be three candidates, the head of the DEA nominee and, and, and Matt Gaetz. Um, uh, Gabbard probably won't make it, in my estimation. That would be four. Uh, Cash Patel, I doubt it. That would be five. Well, how many um, of these nominations are going to get blocked before the Republicans say, okay, we've done enough here. Let's start putting these people in. Well, what's the consequence of that? It's the consequence <laughs> having RFK Jr. as the head of HHS, Charles Kushner as the ambassador to France, uh, Mehmet Oz in charge of Medicare and Medicaid, um, and so on. So uh, while it's good news that the worst uh, nominees are being blocked, I do think that the net effect is going to be to let in some folks, get some folks confirmed uh, who, who really sh shouldn't be. I would add, by the way, because it's important to add this, that the majority of Trump's nominees are fine. That we don't, you might not agree with them, but they're 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 qualified. That the majority of them are. That there are just a few that are kind of extreme and and um, uh, represent a, a threat to the agencies that they're being put in charge of, where the interests of the U.S. We'll follow all of that because that's what we do here at the DSR Daily each and every day, and we hope you will join us for that, and that you will join us for um, our other. Uh, programming. We've got more discussions on Cash Patel later today. We've got discussions coming up also on how some people in Washington are preparing for the new administration and the potential threats that were highlighted here just a moment ago. Uh, and we don't think you'll want to miss those. And we've got more civil consciousness. We've got more of our other pods. Join us for all of those. And if you don't know where to look for them, it's the DSRnetwork.com or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Until then, thank you, Riley. Thank you, Minna. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.